Sagen Sie jetzt mal bitte A. Ah. Anarchie. 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 Ob geschichtlich oder brandaktuell. Mit Berichten und Interviews, mit Beiträgen und Collagen. Beleuchtet das anarchistische Radio Berlin das Phänomen des Anarchismus. Viva Anarchie! In the following interview we made with a UK-based organizer from the Reclaim the Fields initiative, we talk about the planned international camp in North Wales, the relationship of food sovereignty in the prison system, and the topic of prison abolition as such. I'm here with an organizer of the European-wide Reclaim the Fields initiative, and we will talk about the camp uh, you are planning, but uh, first off, we would like to know a bit more about the initiative. Maybe you could tell us something about that. Yeah, so Reclaim the Fields is like an international network of collective projects and individuals of people who are involved in reclaiming food production. So we're explicitly anti-capitalist, and we try to combine food growing and struggles for access to land and food sovereignty with you know other forms of political resistance and solidarity and so we've been going since well for the last 10 years we've had multiple gatherings and camps all over europe mainly western europe but increasingly more into the east people are involved in their own collective projects so this might be a small squatted farm or a community garden and generally we organize in countries and have our own smaller gatherings as well and we sort of provide solidarity when we're in trouble so say someone is facing eviction then many people will come and and work with them and it's really nice for people who are living in the countryside for example and are isolated to come together with like politically like-minded people who share the same passions for kind of yeah i guess social justice and food growing well now for the end of august you're planning an international action camp this sounds quite interesting When will it be and what will it be about? Yeah, so it's from the 28th of August, so Friday, until the 2nd of September. And the aim is to bring people together from all over Europe to support communities in the northwest of the UK and North Wales to fight this new mega prison which is being built, which I'll talk about shortly. But the aim of the camp is to have three days of workshops and skill shares, discussions, you know, activities with families, and then to have two days solid of different actions undertaken by affinity groups against the prison. And it's, yeah, we're camping at a um, anti-fracking site. So in the UK, where they want to do like fracking for gas, often communities will organize like protection camps to defend the land. So we will be at um, Boris community protection camp which is a small new camp that really needs support and they are fighting like unconventional gas drilling in that area they have many developments kind of imposed on them so this is our way of giving solidarity it's going to be really great and it's going to be really important because the UK government is really interested in prison expansion and this is a really visible show of resistance it's going to be lots of ex-prisoners there and talks by ex-prisoners and various workshops about you know ideas around prison abolition and transformative justice and hopefully we will make this struggle more more well known in the UK it sounds quite interesting to combine these topics of food sovereignty and uh, in this case prison system uh, how come so we feel they are really really linked You know, the prison industry in the UK, which some people call the prison industrial complex, is really linked to the kind of birth of like industrial agriculture and how capitalism makes us use the land. For example, one woman from the community who have been fighting the prison, she can remember when the land was farmland before it became industry. You know, so we've seen these huge changes in land use, which have been motivated by capitalism and by the accumulation of wealth that now... This kind of new pioneering edge is the prison system. So they are profiting from exploitation of prisoners, from caging human beings who, especially in the UK, are mainly working class, people of colour, queer people, immigrants, the disabled, people with mental health problems. And now it's a really profitable industry. The UK has the most privatised prison system in the whole of Europe, for example. So this camp is a way of showing resistance to this, that we will not be imprisoned, especially not for profit. And do prisoners actually work in the fields also? Not so much in the UK. There are a few, like, maybe smaller horticultural projects. However, there are two two large workshops, kind of like mini factories, 
where they will be employing over 800 prisoners to, to work for local companies. And they've sold this to the area as, you know, the prison will bring so many economic benefits because actually the prisoners are being paid maybe seven pounds a week or something, which is not even the national minimum wage for one hour, you know, in the UK. Can you tell us more specifics also about this special prison project? You said before it is the second biggest project. It doesn't have a name yet, but it's in uh, Wrexham, which is a small town in North Wales. It will hold more than 2,100 prisoners. It will be run publicly, so it won't be run by a private company. However, one third of all the, the contracts will go to private companies. So still, these companies will make like huge amounts of money from this prison. Some local people have been asking for a local prison for their community, which is, but not real local people, but local power holders, you know, local councillors and MPs have been asking for this. However, in North Wales last year, there was only, I think, maybe 700 people who went to prison in total. So... You know, it's a total lie that this prison is for, for Welsh people as a local prison. You know, it's an absolutely huge mega prison that will most likely target kind of poor communities in the northwest of the UK, like Liverpool and Manchester. So at the moment, they already have planning permission and they are building at the site as we speak. A uh, campaign has been fighting against them as well to try and, I guess, encourage companies to drop the project and not work with them. So people are targeting the construction company who are called Lendlease, an Australian multinational building firm, and other smaller companies locally who are profiting from building the prison. But it's just one prison as part of the UK government's plans to build more. So we feel it's really important that there's active resistance to it. And even if we don't stop it, we, we can show the government that prison building is not okay and we will not tolerate it. Okay, so to come to a more general topic, yeah, anarchists uh, are completely against the prison system as such, but many non-anarchists might not know why or might think, well, there are some cases where maybe, could you reply something to that mm -hmm. or explain? Yeah, prisons are really interesting and, and when um, I often help do workshops to help people understand about prisons and I ask them for their first memory of prison in their life, you know, maybe it's in a, in a Disney film or a TV show or something like this. But we can really see when we do this exercise what the function of the prison system is in terms of basically controlling resistance and also intimidating like poor communities and now increasingly profiting from them. So prisons are sold as a way that we can solve social and economic problems. You know, if there is, say, crime in an area... We don't want to get to the root cause of this, which might be like poverty or inequalities of wealth. So instead, we are sold that prisons will keep us safe and that the state can punish people for us and that this is totally natural, normal and necessary. So when we introduce ideas like prison abolition, what we're really doing is, in a way, we're not even talking about prisons at all. We're saying, okay, how... How can we look after each other without this violence of putting someone in a cage? You know, how can we deal with harm? How can we challenge, like, the inequalities caused by capitalism and the state? You know, do we need prisons to solve these problems and will they ever solve them? So this is, yeah, these are the ideas we challenge. But yeah, so I guess the, the premise is that prisons don't solve problems. They don't get to the root causes of why people are hurting each other, you know, and they especially don't challenge things which are systematic, like patriarchy, for example. You know, if a man has has raped someone, at the moment, it doesn't work that they go to prison because it doesn't meet the needs of the survivor. Most survivors experience, like, really disempowering experiences interacting with the police and the courts, you know, being told they're liars and it's not their fault, la la la. So it doesn't meet their needs. It doesn't make them feel safer. And this man then goes to a prison, which is a highly violent, sexist environment where people openly talk about who they will rape when they get out, you know, for example. So, yeah, it's not going to transform this person who is raped. It's not going to change the culture which has created a rape culture. You know, it's not going to challenge the root causes of patriarchy. So, really, it's ineffective. And the survivor is often, you know, also harmed by this process. So... You know, we're not saying there's there's answers to all of these, you know, they're really complex issues and we but we feel like it's up to communities to decide how they will deal with harm and how they will work for accountability. 
And this is really difficult, obviously, because we're so kind of atomized by by our economic system. You know, most people don't have a community. However, I think as anarchists, we can commit to building these infrastructures now and exploring different ways to deal with harm without calling the police, for example. So prison abolition is as much about fighting prison expansion as is about working for kind of ways to keep each other safe and build like healthy healthy environments and healthy areas for us. So this is why it's really connected to food growing because you know access to land to be able to kind of reproduce and to be able to you know meet our needs autonomously this is really really essential to creating a society where we don't need prisons. Well we don't need them now but you know really working for a society that level of change that we need I feel like food is a huge connector in that. Everyone has to eat. It's our basic need. So finding like radical, small scale, re- real needs orientated ways of producing food in like collective, empowering, horizontal ways. This can really lay the foundations, but build the soil for a totally new way of living. But if we don't challenge things like prisons now, then we will just reproduce these dynamics, you know, and this desire to to punish and to, yeah, depend on the state to, to deal with harm. So we feel it's going to be a really exciting mix of people who are passionate about food growing and maybe anti-prison. And hopefully everyone at the camp will come with some knowledge and some experience of thinking about these things in their life. And we'll hopefully create some really interesting conversations. You already mentioned the concept of transformative justice, for example, that will be talked about in a workshop. Where can people who got interested by this interview or otherwise get more information about the camp and know how to get there? Yeah, so all the all the information about workshops and programs and practical logistics can be found at reclaimthefields.org.uk. And we also want to say it is an international camp. There will be translation translation collective and we really encourage people to contact us who want to contribute to the program you know we'd really love to hear about anti-prison struggles or food growing struggles in in germany for example the camp is only going to be what it is you know for everyone and also on the the days of action the tuesday and the wednesday we also really support decentralized actions to happen So if you can't come to the camp, but you'd like to fight against this prison and the harm it will cause communities for, you know, 100 years to come at least, then, you know, there's details again on the website with links to different companies involved and materials to download. So hopefully, you know, we could have resistance to this prison everywhere. Perfect. Many thanks for that. Thank you.